Well, it was funny because I was doing like sexy setups and photos like for years, mm-hmm. several years beforehand. And then um, I was getting kicked off of social media a lot. Mm. And then, you know, just for my sexy pictures or, you know, they mm. were taking things down and flagging me and stuff. And mm-hmm. so I, um, my fans were like, well, why don't you just do content? And I had no idea what content was at this time. It was, this was at the beginning of 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I mean, I kind of knew what it was, but I, I wasn't really in that world yet. I, and I, I wanted to do sort of like Playboy-esque type pictures or do, I did a lot of sexy cosplay. So I wanted to be able to like show my body and stuff because I had discovered I liked being an exhibitionist of sorts Mm. and and shocking people and just having fun and being my own self. And my social media following really responded to that. Mm. Uh, As soon as I like jumped out of the box of being like just the sitcom girl in the past, which is a great thing to be, but I had grown and developed as a woman and, and, you know, found what I love to do and stuff. So, uh, so I, so I said, oh, oh, maybe somebody will buy a few pictures or something on my Patreon. I, I'll set one up. I'll set an account up just one night. And I did. And I said, but I was like, forget it. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to announce it. So I did announce it. The next day I had like 20 subscribers. Mm-hmm. And by the, when I did finally announce it on Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. and everything, I had like 20 hundred by the end of the week. And it was like, I was the number one adult creator. <laughs> it was like, wow, people really want to, you know, see my stuff. And they're like championing me on and stuff. So it was really, really exciting. Um, and I didn't think like people had told me you're never going to get paid for being sexy. And yet, I mean, I got told by publicists and stuff, you know, if you're not 25 and you're not the new thing, you're not mm-hmm. going to be, you know, considered sexy. And I think that was a real turning point for me. I know it was where I could say, Hey, wait a minute. They were wrong. I did my own thing and yeah. I'm a success at it already so fast. Do you think that the adult industry is a little bit more accepting of people like of different ages and body types and look and stuff like that than the mainstream industry? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause the girls in, in Hollywood, you have to be very skinny all Mm -hmm. the time and you have to be a certain look at least especially back when I was coming up like you really there were types that they wanted to have and 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 especially the Disney girls they were very like strict about things Uh, and they but I think I definitely saw in the adult industry that people there's there's all different walks of life there's like all different types and that's really refreshing and I, I loved that that you know you could have different ages and different you know ethnicity different you know whatever sexual interests and stuff so mm-hmm. it was it was amazing to walk into that because I felt like I was accepted really by that like by people accepting of me so interesting because there's been so many people that I've interviewed who you know came from a life where they felt like they weren't accepted for who they were mm-hmm. and obviously you know these are people who usually fall into like the more sexually charged individuals and are right. shamed for that. Um, right. and then they come into the adult industry, you know, this, this industry, this was to be really like, um, shady and dangerous <laughs> yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And then you find that like, yeah, this, this kind of like embrace embracement yeah. that you didn't get otherwise. Is yeah. That- oh, that's very true. I think it's a safe haven for a lot of people because yeah. they, they find acceptance and they, and I was like that too. I mean, I, I didn't think I'd be accepted like for who I was, sexually or what I wanted to do like that in Mm -hmm. that way. But, um, I finally found an outlet where I could really express myself and I loved it. I love it still. (laughs) Did you find that you had more personal autonomy in the adult industry? I think I, yes. I mean, I just, it was just a different experience than being in Hollywood, just Hollywood. I was just always trying to fill roles that other people wanted me to play. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the adult industry, I was, I'm really able to carve out my own path and my own thing and, and express myself as a human and a woman and everything, um, in a way that, you know, I would never be able to, of course, not in mainstream, but in any way, like Mm -hmm. people just, you know, want to keep you in a box just to keep you in that box forever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So transition to, so how did your contract with Deeper come about? Well, my contract with Deeper is so interesting because uh, I had always heard whispers of Caden along the way, like, and I didn't really know, like, about Deeper. I knew it was starting up. She had one director of the year, Mm -hmm. the first year that um, I, uh, you know, was starting in my Patreon and Mm -hmm. doing all my stuff. And then I realized that, um, and and she was going to start Deeper. But I still, it was was kind of like a parallel thing. But Vixen approached me to do Blacked. Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal to have to, I was like thinking, I'm going to do this big professional production. This is, Mm -hmm. this is it. Like everybody's going to see it. Well, the day that 
my black scene came out, like, it went crazy bonkers. The website crashed. It was <laughs> insane. Wow. Yeah, it was like it broke all records. And it hadn't even been out in the press yet. This is, I didn't make like press announcements. It was really a viral kind of thing that Rachel is going to be in porn and yeah. she's going to be on Blacked. And so that same Saturday, my scene came out. Caden was filming Drive. She was filming the first scene of Drive, for, which was the big feature film mm -hmm. that was going to be that year. And, and Deeper had just really began four months earlier, launched four months earlier. Mm -hmm. And she lost the co-star. So mm -hmm. to Angela White, Angela White was the other lead. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't, she had such a time crunch um, for like awards and stuff. And so she uh, didn't think that she was going to be able to get it out in time. And so she went on Monday morning to Vixen and said, you know what? I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I, I lost the lead. I, what am I going to do? I need somebody to have who can handle dialogue and everything. And that's when Vixen was like, talk to Maitland. And that that afternoon, we went to Starbucks. I'd read the script. They sent it over. And I was like, wow, this is exactly what I've been wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Like, really scripted material that had a lot of good acting. And I knew it would be well directed. And, and it was just very exciting. And so we met at Starbucks. And um, we, well, the rest, I didn't sign the contract right then. We started working on Drive. Mm -hmm. But then Drive blew up. Yeah. Drive was just another phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, that because was that beautiful. was announced to the dress. That was announced to the press, too. So. Mm -hmm. It was just going crazy the first days of Drive when it was announced. I beat Bernie Sanders' heart attack so on Google searches. Wow. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a wild time. And then shortly after that, we really re realized that we wanted to work together mm -hmm. and do a lot of scripted material. And uh, I can't believe it's been three years since yeah. my contract. Yeah, it's been wild, That's but it's been wonderful. And we've made some great projects. And we have another feature project coming out so um, that, you know, people can see right starting right now yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> depending when this airs yeah. i know they're yeah. announcing it tomorrow <laughs> yeah, right yeah so we can't say what so it I can't is can't really say a lot yet. about it but i will say that it is like a metaphorical artistic sort of journey of my life it's like uh, it's like natural born killers meets wandavision that's all i'll say wow <laughs> no. wow it's, yeah it's that's pretty cool incredible. it's pretty cool yeah